We are Myth Vision. Welcome back to Myth Vision Podcast. I have Lady C and JT joining me to, today. Ex Jehovah's Witnesses, how are you? Doing well, doing well. Hey, Thank you. Doing real good, doing real good. Can't complain. I really appreciate both of your work. Uh, I appreciate the way you carry yourself, the things you teach, the way you're trying to help people free them from the cult mindset, that prison mindset that comes from all these cults, uh, especially the Jehovah's Witnesses. And uh, I just want to give a special shout out to you, making sure everybody's aware of your YouTube channel, sure. XJW Critical Thinker. It is in the description. Please go subscribe to our guest today. They are working very hard to help many people leave the cult of the Jehovah's Witnesses. And we're going to be discussing the Jehovah's Witnesses, but also those who are leaving and what are we seeing? So my first question, let's ask ladies first and then we, we'll tee it off to you, JT. Are we seeing a lot more people leave after the COVID pandemic taking place? Now things are opening up. Everyone could start to go where they want to go now. And they didn't have the opportunity to go to the local hall. So are we seeing a lot more people leave now? Are you seeing an, a rise? Absolutely. I We received so many emails from individuals. In fact, we just received one today from um, a sister in the congregation, and she's asking that I keep her information private. Um, she's pretty high up in the congregation, her and her husband, and she has been PIMO for many years, and she can't wait to get out. Um, her husband does understand a lot of the stuff that she's saying, and he agrees with her, but I really kind of think he likes that power that he has as a elder in the congregation. But I feel like, you know, when we were Jehovah's Witnesses and we were leaving, you thought that that power was really something and it's nothing, you know? So hopefully he'll realize that eventually, but we're getting so many emails from people telling us how they were sitting at a Zoom meeting. They got um, very um, bored with the process and, they started surfing the internet and somehow our channel popped up on their radar and then they were able to get out. Other people, I mean, when I tell you that individuals are even disfellowshipped, you know, trying to come back, um, the elders are not giving them the opportunity to um, get reinstated. So they're going online to find out how to get reinstated coming across XJWs on the internet. There's a lot of that going on a lot. Yeah. Wow. JT. Oh man, that, that's a very good question. Um, in fact, it's COVID has had a very negative impact on Jehovah's witnesses. Uh, let me just give a couple examples. Um, when COVID first hit, they went to people were being able to be at home to attend the meetings. It started out that people had to literally dress up, suit, tie, Sunday shoes, you know, Sunday day shoes. I mean, every, every the whole nine yards. Go sit in their living room and look into a camera. And that's how it started out. By the time we now have passed with two years, nobody has their cameras on and folks are sitting around in bedroom shoes and sports shorts. That's where they're at now. So recently, they've just started to go back to the Kingdom Hall. And what they did was very, it was really a, they, they thought it was a brilliant move, but it actually it was more of a revealing move. They made the decision to go back the week that Jehovah's Witnesses have what's called the memorial or the Passover, the celebration of the passing of the bread and wine. And along with that, they have a special talk that they give on Sunday. So that weekend was basically, the, you know, that 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 week and everything was most most exciting week for Jehovah's Witnesses because they would have their highest attendance. And of course, they did. Uh, last year, they had about 20 million people who showed up for the memorial, as it's called. Well, the catch is, what do you get the following week? And that was really the telltale. Uh, so many people wrote us and told us that. The following weeks and the following meetings, the kingdom halls are literally empty because they gave people the option. They gave them the option of either staying home or coming to the kingdom hall. <laughs> that's that's a no brainer. 
That's a no brainer. And I mean, we we we've had we talked to someone. We talked to this this older. We talked to this older with us. She said, she said it's just so nice. I can just stay here in this chair. I can fall asleep, wake up, and, and, and just just and I'm still at the meeting. <laughs> oh, oh man. So just to drive home the point of just how bad it has become, they are literally losing men, males in leadership roles. Uh, it was announced that a decision has been made that they will now appoint elders as young as 20 years of age. Um, my wife and I, we did a video on the phrase that is often used when people talk about elders in congregations. They use the term older men. That is a well-known established word, older men. And now they have taken that word when I was coming along, you had to be almost about 30 years old to be considered an elder in many congregations. Now, as young as 20 years of age. So now you have a 20 year old who's now going to go counsel a couple having marital problems and they're 44 or 45 years old. Yeah, that because is, um, yeah. I mean, it's, it's terrible. It's, it's really bad. It's really that bad. First, remember the first week that they put that in um into play? Mm -hmm. There was a sister in Michigan that yeah. um, called me that morning and she was on a Zoom call and it was a 23 year old brother and he just turned 23 too. And um, he had been just recently appointed as an elder and he actually gave the public talk that that Sunday. And he, he said that she said that the outline that he gave the talk from was talking about um, paying attention to the older men in the congregation. That was his talk. <laughs> and, and, you know, you know, following the lead of these brothers and, you know, whatever they're saying, you got to do what they say. And I'm thinking so they they really. um uh lay that out real nice they set that stage pretty nice you know that they had the young brother give it the new brother being appointed and all that kind of stuff so that was kind of like a slap in the face i don't know if i could have took that sitting down oh, yeah you know, you, you, I, you, you know how you know how the mormons I, i've i've just always been just fascinated by the mormons man they will send guys to your home it looked like they may be 19 they just started shaving last week and they will have this little tag that says Elder Jones. I'm like, yes. come on now. Come on. Really? Really? And so now Jehovah's Witnesses are basically doing the same thing. And so you have men who have been uh, deacons or as Jehovah's Witnesses refer to them as uh, ministerial servants, 35, 40, 45, 50 years old. Now you got these young whippersnappers. Who, and, and I cannot imagine when you, you know, there's a saying, you, you, you recall the, the account in the Bible where the king, you know, he, his father passed, he took over. And instead of seeking out the advice of the older men, he went to his buddies. Now, what should I do? <laughs> and they was like, put your hand, put the hammer down, put the hammer down. And so I cannot imagine what it's going to be like giving these types of young men as much power as an elder has over people's lives. It is going to cause havoc, literally. I, I must say, I didn't know Jack Diddley's squat when I was 20. I mean, I thought I did, but I, I was so young. You know, when you look back, hindsight's 2020, and you know, like, I didn't know nothing. Yeah. And here I am educating and trying to teach couples who've been married 15 years, and they're going through things I've never even dreamt that, it, you know, like, how do I deal with this? I've never experienced this. I don't yeah. understand life. And uh, yeah, so this is an interesting point. It's interesting to know also the decline. It reminds me of how many people go to mass um, yeah. Christmas Eve, you know, but they don't attend. They're, they're, they become more of like a tradition rather than it being like a strict, rigorous cult. And maybe COVID forced, loosened the grip in a way. Oh, there's no question about it. In fact, mm -hmm. as Jehovah's Witnesses, we actually used to poke fun and laugh at other religions because we would say that the church parking lot is filled on Christmas celebration and Easter. And the rest of the year, they can't get anybody to go to church. Our kingdom halls are filled. And now fast forward 25, 30 years, man, it's actually it's actually the same now. Yeah, I mean, but you have to also same. remember that the um, Jehovah's Witnesses um, – there, ha there is an aging population, and when COVID came out, you know they really saw the how fragile the friends were from that angle. And you all, when you when you would see people that were actually doing the Kingdom Hall 
um, crashing. Remember when they were doing the Kingdom Hearts crashes mm, and stuff yeah. like that? You would look around, and this is way before COVID, and they had Kingdom Halls were empty, you know? And then when you looked around, you also saw a lot of elderly people at the meetings. So you could really see that um, they're really struggling. And mm -hmm. um, they had been, they had already been, um, you know, like um, combining Kingdom Halls before COVID. Mm -hmm. So they were losing um, a lot of people and um, maybe they had like four or five congregations that were being um, combined into one. And the, a lot of the friends were complaining about how far they had to drive to the meeting. And so um, we saw this before COVID, you know? So now that these people um, were, were given an opportunity to stay home and be on a Zoom call and they no longer had to drive, you know, that, I mean, that was a really nice deal, you know? <laughs> and it so, it yeah. really is. It really is a nice deal. I, I'd like to ask, because your YouTube channel, right? Your YouTube channel is XJW Critical Thinker. We talked about this in the past, but we didn't really get to cover every jot and tittle, of course. <laughs> but I, I must ask, as far as the doctrines go, have there been any cases maybe in the past year, year and a half since we've last recorded that you would like to maybe bring to my attention? Like, here is this crazy case. Maybe there's issues going on within Jehovah's Witnesses. I don't know. You, you use your own imagination and come up with what, because I already know they always have some crazy thing going on or someone who left and has a story about something. Yeah. It, 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 <laughs> where do you start, right? <laughs> um, w w one of the things that they have really been pushing, I mean, really pushing, is uh, the governing body. Um, they are setting up the governing body literally uh, to be Christ. I mean, you cannot get to Christ unless you go through them. Hmm. And and now that they have the internet, they now are able to literally become like superstars. Uh, these individuals who serve in the governing body now, they are literally like rock stars. Uh, when they would travel, you would have people ask them to sign their Bibles as if they were a, 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 a publisher of a book. And so this, this group of people, unlike when I was coming along, they were very low key. These guys, oh, they're like rock stars. I mean, they are like rock stars. And so they have elevated themselves to such a, a status now. Um, it's going to be very, very interesting. And a lot of people are starting to see that. And that's what's causing people to question. Uh, one of the things that we often say is that the Internet is a game changer. Let me just give you an example. Um, there's a process in the Jehovah's Witnesses known as a judicial committee. And this basis is an internal tribunal. Well, if you committed a sin, they'll bring you in and then question you. And I mean, they will question you down and, you know, you can't take any notes. You can't write anything down. You can't bring anybody along with you, basically. Um, whereas on the other side of the table, they just write. They just write and they'll use each other's questions that they ask one another to you. The next guy will form his questions based on the last question. And so many times people can't think that they make they get confused and, and, and they, they, they give the wrong answer. And of course, they're basically trying to catch you in a lie. Well, what's happening is a lot of people are starting to videotape their judicial committee case and they're posting it to the Internet. And just recently, a circuit overseer in meeting with some elders, they mentioned that, that people are coming into these judicial meetings, brothers, and they're videotaping and they're putting up on the Internet. So basically, Ooh. going forward, they're going to be doing basically a pat down almost. You got any camera? Let me see. Let me see. Let me make sure you got no camera here. <laughs> And so this is the type of, and see, and see, I tell people all the time, this is the type, these are the type of things that you need to stop and ask yourself the question. Well, hold on, wait, what, what, what is this? What is this telling me? If you want to know if whether or not this is a high control group or a cult, these are the type of questions you need to ask when you see this type of behavior, because these are the things that only high control groups would do to a person. Now, what do you do when you have uh, people that are going, these are the last of the last days of the last hour? I mean, you know, this elder guy, whatever his name is, he's like, and we are in the final part of the final part of the last hour. And I always like to mock his how he presents because I hear he's not really like that in real life. But that apocalyptic 
you know, fervor that we still hear them try to say, has that dwindled since COVID? Are they trying to change the script anyway? No. No. Yeah, you're right. They're, they're not, not at all. Not, not at, at all. all because they're all. okay. So, so here you have the pandemic and then you have, um, the, the Russia, the Russia, the Russia and the, the Ukraine Russian war. war. Yeah. And so, um, they're really having fun with that one, mm -hmm. you know, and then to intertwine with what JT was saying earlier, I'd like to say that one of the things that we've been noticing as well is um, individuals have been telling us about how they feel um, they, they've been waking up too because the watchtower was saying, you need to believe or listen to what we say, even if it doesn't sound right. So yeah. it's like blind faith. It's like, you know, you're, you're leading this group of people. We're going to tell you what to do, how to do it. And don't question us. That, that, that's been waking up people and they've been emailing us, telling us about that because several people told us that's how they woke up because they were like, wait a minute, this doesn't make any sense, you know? And so then to like answer your question too, Derek, you know, the thing about the last of the last days, this is the only way this religion can survive yeah. is to be thinking about, hey, we're in the last days. So here you have a pandemic on top of a pandemic because how many other spinoff um COVID diseases have come up since the original COVID came out. So it's like, oh my God, it's a COVID and that's a COVID on top of a COVID and a war, right? So these people are really using this fear to drive these people to stay in their seats at the hall or on a Zoom call. Yeah. There are basically two camps that's developing among Jehovah's Witnesses. There's the diehard. Every time they tell them that we're living in the last days, they anything that jumps off around the world in terms of world events and, and geopolitical stuff, the witness gets that, that there's a camp that just gets so excited. It's, it's going to be coming soon. Is this something's wrapping up? And then there's the other camp. And this is the growing camp where people are realizing uh, y'all been saying this for almost 150 years. It is clearly obvious that while the world may end, you absolutely do not know how to read the signs. And that's where people are not getting excited. It's not scaring people. When my mom became a witness back in the late 60s, early 70s, the 1975 uh, issue was, was huge. And if you look up any statistics, and the Watchtower has produced these statistics, they're online in different, uh, different locations, uh, you look at the growth. Jehovah's Witnesses had the most explosive growth that this organization has ever had leading up to 1975. After that, and especially now, the growth is, is, is just minimal. And when you consider there are literally countries around the world, China, certain parts of India, just all around the world, where people have really never even talked to Jehovah's Witnesses more than five minutes, uh, it shows that their, their statements of, well, the world's going to end when God has, his, the preaching work has been done around the world. Well, there are people, there are places, people might see a Jehovah every four or five years. And so all of a sudden they have witnesses who are in other countries going around every day. I mean, I, I remember when I was in New York, uh, when I was in the congregation I was assigned to, we literally knocked on the same doors every weekend, which means the people in New York City were, were getting the opportunity to learn about Christ every weekend. And somebody over in over in over in India, they might right. learn about Christ every four or five years when a witness might swing through the town. So how is God going to bring the world to the end with, 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 with such an unbalance of people having opportunities? And, and so the message that the witnesses give, it simply doesn't have the weight. And the problem is, is the Internet. Mm. You can check anything now. Is that the number one enemy of the Jehovah's Witnesses at this point, the Internet? Yeah. I mean, mm -hmm. for, for any high control group or cult, the inability to control the flow of information is the worst thing that can happen to them. That's why they have to shut you down. Every Jehovah's Witness knows you can ask all the questions you want. You just can't question the answers after they gave it to you. And so it shuts people down. If you start asking too many questions, folks start looking out, out the corner of their eye. Because every witness knows there are certain questions you just cannot ask and be able to maintain your standing. And we used to tell people all the time, okay, now, brother, you know, I, you, you've been given the answer. You know, go, go sit down and wait on God now. And for most people today, they realize they ain't no answer, man. You just know what you're talking about. Yeah, <laughs> they ain't no real answer. You just know what you're talking about. <laughs> Did you want to add to that, Lady C? Well, I was going to mention um, 
you know, when I tell you, I we get so many emails, we get a lot, and I've talked to quite a few people. One of the things I'd like to say is about this COVID shot. Um, a lot of the Jehovah's Witnesses are starting to, like, there's, there's two different camps in the Jehovah's Witness religion right now. There's the people who are getting shots, and there's people that's not getting shots. And I was talking to um, actually two people this past week. That was that was their wake up call moment because they felt like the watchtower was trying to get them to get the shot. And they don't like that. They don't like the organization telling them what to do. So this this one brother said in his congregation, it's like the haves and the have nots. And he said that the brothers in the congregation are telling people, if you don't have the shot, you can't go and and um gather with these brothers over here. So he said it's a pretty bad thing that's happening right now in the organization hmm. with the shot. And so we also had a friend of ours tell us, I want to say upwards of maybe 600 elders have been removed because they were talking against the shot. And so it was like the, the Watchtower Society is really losing its grip on its members because there are people that are not standing on their side. And it so is kind of weird. Mm -hmm. it, it, it is weird to me personally, right? So, mm -hmm. so me as someone who's a big fan of science and, and, and learning like about the advancements of things that might help us and these, whatever, um, you would think like they're very conspiracy minded based on the Bible. You would think the organization would be like against this, you know, drug that's being <laughs> produced and whatnot. And they would think this is part of the end of the world, right? Like, <laughs> Like it's kind of weird that like, they can't make their minds up on what they need to do here. Uh, well, I don't know. It, it, it's 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 not quite like that. This is this is this is the way it works in this religion. <clears throat> as a Jehovah's Witness, if you as an individual have to take the hit, for example, you the little four, five, six, seven year old child in school who got to go down to the office and be laughed at and poke fun at because you wouldn't eat the cupcake, then you have to take that. You have to take that beat down. But if it's the organization that's going to take the hit, the Watchtower has a very interesting way of changing the rules. The Watchtower doesn't take the hit. Uh, the Watchtower came out with the, for example, the in, in, in Australia, the Jehovah's Witnesses came out initially saying, you know, we're not going to be joining this scheme of, of y'all, of the churches. We're not, you know, we're not doing that. And then all of a sudden, it was mentioned that we're going to take our tax exempt status. Okay, hold up, hold up. Wait, wait, wait. How much we need to pay for this thing? And so all of a sudden they changed. The same oh. thing happened in the yeah, the same thing happened in the country of Bulgaria. And so the Watchtower does not want to risk its status. So all of a sudden they make their members take their stand for the truth. The Watchtower can change overnight if it's going to cost them something. They have no problem revising the rules if they are going to take the hit i'd like to play a little game with both of you if we can before we go uh, this is this is i think this is a great thought experiment and i know the kind of down-to-earth people that you are it's probably subjective on your response to these but because you've had probably more than what i'm going to ask for numbers here what would you say are the top three or five, I'll give you three to five. If you can come up with five, cool. But at least we can come up with three. The top three to five reasons people are leaving the Jehovah's Witness, the whole cult, okay, that you can think of, whatever order you want to bring them up as is fine. Um, three to five reasons. And, you know, we'll go like, you You can both tackle the same issue too. So you might start talking about it and then Lady C has an idea on it or, or vice versa. It doesn't matter. Top Lacey, three Lacey, to five. You want, you want you want to give you want to give one? Well, I would be willing to say that they're tired. Yeah. I mean, when we were going and we left over 20 years ago, and I was just tired. I remember walking in into our apartment one day and I just said to myself, I don't think I could keep doing this. I'm just tired. <laughs> Can you imagine if I was still there walking around blocks, knocking on doors, looking for um uh, 9 11 <laughs> happen, all these other things that's happened up until the pandemic and thinking the end's gonna come seeing all your family getting older and dying and all the friends in the congregation, they're thinking they're going to live through Armageddon. And then all of a sudden you're going to funeral after funeral, nothing's happening. 
It doesn't seem like life is getting any better. You're you're broke, you're tired, you're poor, you know, people just tired. Yeah, um, that's the bottom line, man. Witnesses are tired. Um, you've been carrying a message to your neighbors. Let, let me give you a perfect example. Like myself and, and so many other people, right now, so many Jehovah's Witnesses are now moving into the fifth generation. The fifth generation, man. It's important to understand that what makes Jehovah's Witnesses unique as a religious denomination is that they are a time-sensitive religious group. And when you are a time-sensitive religious group, that means certain things have to happen within a time frame that you have said are going to happen. And when those things keep failing to happen, people begin to realize, y'all a joke, man. I've had people say to witnesses, um, I remember my grandmama used to stuff with y'all. My grandmama used to stuff it with y'all. Y'all come to the house and y'all were talking about the world ending. I got grandkids now. And so people begin to realize it. And so the actual individual Jehovah's Witness, he wants to live his life. He wants to enjoy all the normal things. The Watchtower has taught Jehovah's Witnesses that you cannot live a normal life in this system. The Watchtower has stated that you cannot live a normal life. And what's a normal life? Just enjoying the cares of the day. That's really all it is. The witness is on a hamster wheel, man. He's on a merry-go-round that he cannot get off. And people are getting tired of the ride. And they're jumping off. Mm -hmm. um, and that's really, I think that's probably the number one thing is that they're just physically tired. Uh, the second thing is, the teachings. You can't teach something as being from God, enforce it by excommunicating, disfellowshipping, cutting people off from their family, their friends, everybody they've known, because you can't have people who are, who are your friends who are not Jehovah's Witnesses. You cannot find a Jehovah's Witness who will stand in front of a group of elders and a person stands beside them and they say, this right here is John. He's one of my best friends, known him for 30 years. The first question those elders are going to ask you, so John, what congregation do you go to? Congregation? Are you, uh, congregation? No. Jehovah's Witness can never introduce someone who's not a witness to their other witness as a friend because they'll be in trouble. Jehovah's Witnesses don't have friends. And so they want to just live life. And, man, that's one of the things that we are finding. And so they're just running, they're, they're running out of time. And like my wife mentioned, the big thing, man, is they're growing old. Now, I, we just, my wife and I, we just buried our moms. My mom died in, in December. My wife, her mom died in January. They was witnesses from the 60s. They was, they was never supposed to grow old. That's what they told them. They're now laying in their graves. Um, and yep. that's what's happening to witnesses. And so the younger people, like, they've seen their fathers be elders and literally die just just lose their health trying to keep running for the watchtower doing this. And, and most of the young guys, they're like, I don't want to do that. I'm not interested in that. And that's why they're running such a shortage of quote unquote qualified men to serve in you know positions. Nobody wants to do that stuff. Right. And so they're, they're, they're getting tired. The doctrines are falling apart. Yeah, everybody know love your neighbor, you know, don't steal, you know, don't rob your neighbor. Everybody got those teachings. But a lot of the core teachings. A lot of the things that witnesses built their life around, mm -hmm. they see it's not coming to fruition. Yeah, they like you were saying, um, JT, um, about the doctrines. I'm going to go back and double click on that. We left because of the doctrines. Yeah. Um, yeah. Can you tell us those getting, doctrines again? Yeah, like the, the 1914, um, people were leaving because of that. They were leaving because of the overlapping generation. There were people that were leaving about the uh, child sexual, sexual abuse. Um, a lot of people watch the um, Australian yeah. Real Commission. Uh, some people watch the Leah Remini, you know, all, the uh, the the one on oxygen. Um, then there were just people that were just saying that one lady said that she was just getting tired of the JW broadcasting. And she felt like JW broadcasting really brought the Watchtower full front and center stage as to who they were. Because she said it wasn't nothing but a cult. The way they have those uh, dramas, those videos, and they're trying to use it to manipulate you, 
how to how to treat people like at the assembly when they gave the um illustration of the young girl who was disfellowshipped and she called home and the mother just looked at her phone and didn't answer and a lot of people just got blown away by that so i mean it's just little things that people are looking at and it's like one uh, like a group of people over here are looking at this issue different people over there looking at that issue right and they're just putting the pieces together and they just go on the internet google jehovah's witnesses <laughs> and i mean once you do that it's like you're in the ballpark now yeah. So, so this is another question, I guess, in the vein of this, because we could go, I'd like to go into some so just multiple issues that we find mm -hmm. doctrine wise. And, uh -huh. and like you talk about this unique generational thing. I don't think that's been emphasized enough. I don't think people watching quite get it right. It's that serious. But for people who are leaving the Jehovah's Witnesses, I guess one of the things I would want to bring to the front is they're not making this up in their head. Sure, they are to some extent, but they're getting this from the Bible. OK, so they're reinterpreting. But yeah. sure. My point is, is I, I relate to the Jehovah's Witness. I was a young pre-mill dispensational boy who thought the second coming of Jesus was going to happen in his lifetime. I had dreams that the heavens turned to fire, like the whole sky was on fire and it was falling down out of the sky. and It was coming toward me. The whole earth was on fire. I closed my eyes and said, Jesus, mm -hmm. at the last second. And I opened my eyes and there's this man with a feathered pen writing in a big old book. And his head's not turned toward me. And he's just writing. And he says, Derek, everything's going to be okay. You're in a better place now. And I felt like I was warm inside of a mother's bosom. That's the only thing I can describe it as, right? This is in my dream. Then I had another dream that lightning bolts were striking. And I was sitting on the front porch watching a storm and the lightning bolt struck me and I started getting sucked up and floating up toward heaven, like the rapture. I'm looking around and there's all these people attached to lightning bolts floating up. And I believed that this was going to happen. My wife had dreams that she was left behind and I was gone. And cause I was so serious about this thing. And I was reading the new Testament because the whole new Testament says it's going to happen soon. Yeah. yeah. Except 2,000 years later, a cult develops and says, it's going to happen soon, yeah. you know, and they just keep the same motto. Yeah. Um, the, the witnesses, they have literally taken words that everybody knows has meaning. Uh, when someone says something, uh, I'll see you very soon, uh, is, is closely upon us. People understand that that is a time frame. And I often ask Jehovah's Witnesses when I talk to them, I says, when you use such words as soon, quickly coming, around the corner, you're talking about time frames. And I'll just pin them down. I'll say, well, now, as humans, we only have certain types of time frames. Seconds, minutes, hours, days, weeks, months. Yeah. Tell me what time frame, according to your denomination, are you working with? Are you talking about weeks, months, years? And at that point, they'll say, well, we don't really. I said, well, you, 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 you can't use the word soon and not have a time frame. Nobody thinks of soon as being 37 years. I'll stop by the house soon. That's not that took him 37 years to get to our house. <laughs> People and so and so you and so you have, and that's the challenge that religious belief systems have. Um, they will take well understood words, common words. And you gotta remember when the Bible was written, the Bible was not written to intellectuals, it was written to people with farmers. So these people have a basic understanding of when someone said, I'm gonna stop by your house soon. They did not think years. I'm sorry. And so religious belief systems must redefine what these words mean. And that's where they get into trouble at. Let me give you a perfect example. You asked about a teaching. I'm going to throw this out there because it's kind of unique. The Watchtower is playing, and I like, and, and I, I use this loosely. They're playing with trying to introduce a new teaching, one that they have rejected for years and dog other folks for teaching. And that's called the rapture. Recently, the Watchtower has put forth the idea that all members of the governing body and all those of the anointed are going to be taken to heaven. And as a result, regular brothers are going to be left in charge. Now, that means all of them are going to have to die 
or some of them are going to have to be taken to heaven with a rapture because they're not old. Each year they do that memorial celebration. When I left, it was 7,000 people. And the number was supposed to go down because they're dying going to heaven. Last year, it was like 20,000 people are drinking and eating the bread and wine. 20, the number's going up. More folks going to heaven than ever before. Um, and so it just reverses their teaching. It, it creates a problem. So the witnesses are literally playing with trying to figure out how they can teach this rapture teaching, and it fits. I mean, it, it's really amazing. I, I When I first heard I'm like, oh, my goodness, they're trying to teach the rapture. Because that's what many denominations teach, that God will snatch people up to heaven. And that's the only way they will snatch the governing body up and those of the anointed and leave somebody behind to be put in charge. Because what they've been doing recently is they've been grooming these other individuals who are not members of the governing body. They're not, quote unquote, anointed. And so these people are going to be left here on the earth to run things while the governing body, the faithful and discreet slave, goes off to heaven. So it's kind of interesting how, you know, and, and, and so for a lot of people, when they hear them just start making up stuff, they're like, here they go again. Just, just stick to what the Bible does. They don't make up stuff. And, and, and that's where a lot of people are really get, becoming frustrated because people recognize this stuff is made up. This stuff mm -hmm. is made up. And, uh, <laughs> and so it's going to be interesting because those are the type of things that's literally driving people out. They're like, I'm tired of these guys. It's pretty guys. bad. I think it's pretty bad because when we were in, I remember this sister and it was pre-2000. Um, and she was having some health issues. And she said, I know the end is going to be here by the year 2000. And so she said she was going to just hold off from having her surgery because she wouldn't have to worry about that. And that's been, what, 22? It's, we're, in, we're in the year 2022 now. So I wonder where she is with her situation. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people were just, it was just pretty bad, you know? Yeah. The, the, the teachings of Jehovah's Witnesses, what they do, they're taught in such a way that the typical Jehovah's Witness cannot, and I literally mean this, man, they cannot see more than five at the most 10 years. If you have two Jehovah's Witnesses talking, you know, you may have a, a, a young brother, he's talking to an older Jimmy, and he'll say, Brother Davis, let me ask you a question. You know, things are just so bad. Do you think this system can go on for another five or 10 years? Well, I'm going to tell you, young man, I, I'm not trying to say the income, but I just don't see how it's going to go. I just don't see how it's going to work. And so, as a result, the Jehovah's Witness plans his life that way. He doesn't think in terms of retiring. He doesn't think in terms of getting old, needing Medicare, needing, needing insurance. He doesn't see that. And so after five years go by, he just readjusts again for mm -hmm. five more years, five more years. And next thing you know, he reaches the age of my parents who are now, you know, in their 80s, reaching their 80s. When they started out, they was in their, you know, 27, 28 years old. Yeah. And so right. it really and that's what really is messing up a lot of witnesses, man. I mean, a lot of witnesses mm -hmm. it's really messed up a lot of witnesses. What were you saying, lady? I was going to say, so like you talk about you see people leaving, but you also got to remember that there's a lot of people that are never going to leave. There's right. a lot of people that's going to be grounded, rooted at the Kingdom Hall because they are your superstitious people. They are your people that's thinking, hey, I really don't think that. um the, I really do believe I'm going to take my chances with the religion. They're going to take their chances and say, I would rather stay here thinking that Jehovah is going to be with the, the Jehovah is with the watchtower and, and live my life out like this, than be over here with you. Yeah. Well, put. You know? if, if I were to turn this in a way of asking you both, you know, your goal is to critically analyze and to get people to think critically about the Jehovah's Witnesses. You're not funneling people down a path. Hey, join our cult. Well, leave that cult to join our cult. But it is good to give people a community in a sense of, of welcomeness that you're not alone in this journey out of this harmful, high control group that we call the Jehovah's Witnesses. So what, what do you both do to help those who are trying to leave? Do you have some sense of community? How, how, how do you go about helping them? I know you don't tell them what to believe. Um, there's probably people who are spiritual. There's people who are probably atheist, more skeptical like me. You know, it, it varies, but they all have one thing in common, and they've been harmed by a high control group or 
they're sick and tired. Maybe they weren't harmed and they just realized they've been duped. Yeah. What do you do about well, it? I, I feel like when whenever I take a, a call or an email from someone, I find that they're looking for a ledge to land on. They're they're afraid. Um, people don't know, they don't have any friends outside of the religion. Um, they have a community that they're looking back at that they feel was strong. Now it's like, I need to, to meet someone. I just took a call the other night, um, a young lady. She's trying to get out of a bad relationship. And um, it's pretty bad. So the whole idea was I made a few phone calls. And I tried to like find people that live in her area or just because she, she's not looking for no monetary support or nothing like that. She just needs to talk to people that are already out of the religion and they need to know that that it's OK, that she's not by herself. She wants to talk to other people so she she can begin to make friends outside of the religion. So. um this is the kind of stuff we're doing. We're, we're bridging the gap, bringing people together. Um, I call myself an accidental coach sometimes. I'm not, I'm not a coach. I know there's a lot of people who um, they're, they're, they, they, they've left the religion and now they're all some kind of coach. Now, I do give you know advice to people, but it's like, I'm, I'm like, this is just, I'm not a coach, but I'm not trained to do this. But, you know, this is what you might want to think about, you know. No, no belief system. I'm not trying to give them a belief system. I'm not trying to give them, you know, a speech about how to live their life. But I just give them the tools that they need to survive. And a lot of people, the tools that they really need is getting a job. Um, when I first left the religion, I was given the tool of education. And then I started saying, you know what? I When we left the religion... I spent a lot of years with my head in a book. So my new tool is not like go to college. I'm not telling people that anymore. I'm telling people, try to find a job that you can get that's going to pay you some money that you don't need a college degree. Because sometimes you don't want to spend a lot of time, you know, going to school, putting your head in a book. And then I read this article out of the UK that said that, a lot of companies over in the UK weren't necessarily hiring people with degrees because they realized that people who have a degree doesn't necessarily mean that you want that person to hire them to work for your company. But it could be also people that just got universal knowledge in other areas and they're good employees too. So now my new thing is, you know, for people that want to get their degree, you know, I'll show them, you know, what I did, how I did it how I navigated the system, you know, try to find your resources to get your, your schooling paid for in this way and that way. But then I also encourage people to look for other to look for jobs that don't have a degree or to get people together to network. Maybe there's somebody that might know somebody that's working at an, a company or something and they can refer you, you know, so try to do some networking with people because a lot of people, they really cannot afford time-wise or money to go to school. So I'm 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 trying to work with people like that. Wow. Yeah. Um one of the things we we one, one of the things that we encourage people is is really to start building a new clientele of friends. The organization sets you up for failure. Uh, they they tell you to cut off everybody that you know in terms of real relationship. Witnesses are cordial to everybody because they want to preach to you. So that's, that's just by default. They can be very nice to people, but you don't have any relationships with anyone outside the organization. Any Jehovah's Witness who has any meaningful relationship is going to get dogged. He'll be looked down upon. So if he does, he has to keep it a secret. There are people I, I, I had witnesses say, well, I got people. I'm, yeah, but don't nobody know. And you can't tell anybody. So please stop. Just be quiet and sit down. And you're talking crazy. Uh, when you can't introduce your friends to everybody around you, that means they get you. You're running. You're running. You're running afraid. Uh, that's what we're talking about. Non-Jehovah's Witnesses can introduce their best friends to anybody they're talking to. A Jehovah's Witness can. Um, so you have to start building a new clientele of friends because you will be cut short when you leave. There is no question about it. And it is swift. I mean, it is swift, man. We know people, they make the announcement at the Kingdom Hall. They got four or five thousand 
contacts, you know, Facebook and all, in 24 hours, man, it's 80, 90% dropped off because they just send the word around. He got this fellowship. I'm unfriend, 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 you know, delete, delete, delete. And, and so, you know, you know, unsubscribe. And so, um, that's the way it works. That's so messed up. Oh, Chief, it's messed up, Chief. I'm, and, and so and so the reason we tell people this is because, and this is what hurts us so bad, man. I'm gonna teach you this. This is just so painful. Is that we get the we too many times we get the phone call after. Yeah. What can I do now? I, I can I back it up? Can I reverse it? No, this is a one-way trip. When you take your position that you're leaving this organization, the witness is already trained how to respond. And that is to shut down like an ATM machine. And they will do it, and they will do it swiftly. And we're talking about family, friends, folks you've known for 20 years. They will cut you to the bone. And, oh, yeah, and a lot JT. of people don't realize that. Oh, yeah, JT. And the other thing I wanted to mention, too, is I tell people to, to seek therapy. Oh, yeah. Oh. Because a lot of people, you know, before you get to the getting a new job and getting uh, an uh, um, education, <laughs> you know, you got to get yourself together, yeah. you know, um, yeah. So that you can, um, you know, mentally be able to thrive out here, yeah. you know, because people have been the Watchtower has done a number on people. Yeah, it's abusive and, uh, mentally, yeah. at least, you know, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. This, but this, the thing is, when they when you when you let people so when you get people together in a round table or you because we've, we've had um, like some some private chats where we where people wanted to get together and we had like a meetup. And we got like 40 people one time on a private chat. And it was like, they could oh, not believe God. the number of people that was oh, going man. through. That was like a fair, that's like a group wow. therapy session. It was like an it was like an eye opener for us. It was like, oh my God. Mm -hmm. These were active crazy, Jehovah's Witnesses or ex-Jehovah's Witnesses that just ex, left? Ex. Yeah. Wow. We, we did it a couple years ago around Christmas time. Yeah, we was wow. just amazed at the mm -hmm. impact. As people told their stories, you're like, oh, man. And so you can really see that a lot of us have been damaged by this. And mm -hmm. now, they're, they're, just to add a caveat, there's also another group of people, and we just did a video on this group. They're known as PIMOs, P-I-M-O, mm -hmm. e you know, physically in, mentally out. Right here. Yeah. And that group of people... It, man, I'm going to tell you, you really feel for those because everybody's circumstances are different. I, someone someone was saying, you know, I, I, I think you're a coward if you just don't go ahead and, and just get out. And I, I posed a question to the person. I said, let me ask you a question. I understand exactly how you feel. I said, but once you start talking to the number of people that we've talked to, you kind of begin to see that everybody can't wear the same kind of shoes. Mm -hmm. You are a senior citizen. You live in a senior citizen home that is predominantly filled with a lot of Jehovah's Witnesses. Most of the caretakers are also Jehovah's Witnesses. You have nowhere to go. What, what do, you do you do? Wow. Okay. You talk to me now. Talk to me. Okay. I talk can't. An I would BS my way to get my next meal. That's what so, I would do. <laughs> so these are the same. These are the same people. Yes, Lord. Who are going to have to change? These are the same people who have to change you. In the bed. Yeah. So this particular person is not in the same identical spot that a 21-year-old who just rolled up out of the house and he's moved in with some of his, his boys. Okay. It, it's not the same. Yeah. And so when and, and see that 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 kind of takes me back to being in Watchtower. You see, as one of Jehovah's Witnesses, we were all told the, the same thing was a solution. All told the same thing was a solution. When when I was an elder, man, I went to elder school. And I remember it was 900 elders in Alexandria, Virginia. The instructor said, brothers, would you like to be able to deal with 85, 90 percent of every problem you got in the congregation when it comes to the friends? And you can look you can see all the elders like, yeah, I'm sure would. Sure would. He says, take out your pen and write this down. And so you see everybody got their pen out. They waiting for some 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 some, some, some manna from heaven or something. And he said, now, these are the questions you want to ask. Are you regular at the meetings, brother? And if the brother says no, you said this could be part of the problem right there. Are you regular out in field service, knocking on doors on a regular basis? If the person says no, this could be where your problem is. Are you keeping up with the reading of all the magazines and the books that the society, the branches sending out for us? If you're not keeping up, brother, this could. And you can see the L's in the room like, oh, Lord, please. I thought you were going to tell us something, man. Please. See, I got one better for you. <laughs> I, I, got, I got one better for you. You you were at an elders meeting, 
I don't know where you were at at the circuit assembly when they gave that same talk. Because I remember it was like I was at a um I I I, I had went to this seminar for my job, and when they asked me to open up my notebook and they wanted me to write something down, I was like, oh. I'm writing it down. It was something new. It was something I could use. It was really good stuff, right? Right. So then a couple of weeks later, we had our circuit assembly. I'm thinking, I'm having a flashback, right? Oh, <laughs> get your pen out, y'all. So then all of a sudden, <laughs> it was like the same questions that JT just got through running down over here. That was the same thing that the brother said from the platform. And I, and I forgot to tell that. And I remember because we were almost about leaving at the time, yeah. maybe about a Maybe two years, yeah. we were going to be leaving another two years. We didn't yeah. know at the time, right? Yeah, yeah. When he, when he, when, when I started writing that down and I got to the second one, I threw my pen on my notepad and looked away. I was like, I'm done. I'm so done. Yeah. It's the I'm same so script. This. It's the yeah. same script. Yeah. And, you know, this is one thing I was going to mention on our way out of this is it, it, I hope you'll come back. This is, I always <laughs> cherish these conversations with both of you. You are, I can't tell you how much fun it is. Honestly, it is, it is, it is, it is so fun. much fun. Uh, but you know where these ideas come from, I, you know, I like to educate people and explain to them. Yeah. If you read the new Testament and you actually read it, Jesus says that, if you don't hate your father, mother, sister, brother, yeah, and come follow me. In one of the yeah. gospels, he goes so far as to say, They're not my sister, my mother, my brother. Yeah. These in the kingdom. See, so when you take the words of Jesus to mm -hmm. bank, yeah, you're gonna end up with high control cult mentality yeah. groups. Yeah. And so, you know, I, I hate to break it to people who want to just be spiritual and not be in a cult, but if you're following Jesus. What do you say to that? You yeah. Know? And see, and to and to add insult to injury is when you take whatever Jesus said and then because see, this is what the watchtower does, and they're good at this. They get to add additional stuff. Ooh. They get to define what makes a good Christian. And this is where the, this is where religious belief systems in general get into trouble. Um, they will add additional things. For example, we mentioned about counting time, how Jehovah's Witnesses have to write and record the time that they turn in. That's an interesting concept because when, when they first started this, so many Jehovah's Witnesses, they balked at this. Like, what do you mean I got to report to the church how much time I spend talking to people about God? You're crazy. They wrote an article about why you need to turn in your time. And throughout this article, it was called, the article was basically on requirements of God, requirements of God. So once you can convince a person that they, and, and, and the Bible, I like the way the Bible mentioned what Paul says, you know, people will deliver you up and kill you and they think they've done a service to God. There is nothing more dangerous than a man or woman who believes that their actions are sanctioned by God. Because you can get some crazy actions from people and you come up with some crazy teachings when they think and they teach that we got this from God. Therefore, you got to do it. And that's kind of what the Jehovah's Witnesses have done over the years. Um, they have so many teachings that if you look at them in the backyard, in the trash pile, you're like, well, y'all said all this stuff was from God. Well, we had to change. And that's really the, the whole thing, because. This 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 organization, man, it literally makes up teachings on the fly. This reminds me of Muhammad, you know, from what one of the stories I heard is he saw, I think it was his nephew by marriage or something, his wife nude, like he got a glimpse of her and was like, oh Ooh, she's Ooh. smoking. So then he had a revelation and he was like, you know, God told me uh, she's supposed to be mine in marriage. <laughs> So he ends up divorcing the nephew divorces her so he can marry her. Okay. Like you start making up crap on yeah. the way. And the sad thing is people, you know, there is no critical thinking. None. This none. is what you're trying to produce on YouTube. So if you don't go and do that, go subscribe to their YouTube channel. Your brain's going to rot out. All I, I know, can right? say is you got to go subscribe <laughs> right now. Uh, join oh, the man. cult. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> If you're used to joining Colts anyway, you might not. Oh, no, right. Seriously, though, I, yeah. I want everybody to please go subscribe to your channel. 
Um, you both are amazing people. And I, I had a blast today. I know there's so much more we could really talk about. Yeah, we'll do about. it again. We'll do it again. We'll do it again. We, 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 Sooner we, than later. Yeah. You know, we tell people, people ask about, you know, people following you and listening. I said, we see, you got to keep in mind, man, that's what got us in trouble to start with. Mm -hmm. We were following someone. So I tell me, don't be following me. You better check this stuff out for yourself. <laughs> and uh, that's what got us, because that's what got us in trouble. We did, we, we were following someone. We didn't mm -hmm. check stuff out. So I'm telling people, don't be check, don't be following me. Check it out. That's all we encourage people to do. Do your homework. And the greatest resource that you can use is the Watchtower's own published material. That's I the greatest resource. I personally feel like the Jehovah's Witnesses get a bad um, issue that they deal with because you were in a religion yeah. that told you what you could and could not do, what you could eat, what you could drink, what you could, how you dress and so forth. But I still believe that in life, we still need mentors and we still need guidance mm -hmm. from our friends. And I see so many people doing things and I'm not, you know, I, I'm not, I don't want to get into that, um, telling people what to do either. But sometimes if somebody getting ready to run into a brick wall, they need to know that. Mm. And I feel like the Jehovah's Witness community, after they leave, they just let people run into these brick walls because they say, well, I'm not going to do that anymore. I'm not telling people what to do. But what they don't realize is that's not what you're doing. It's like being on a job. If you're on a job, a lot of times, let's say you're a new person and you come to a job and then you have a mentor and that person is helping you navigate the new place you're working at. Now, Bob, you might want to be careful going over here. You might want to be this, you know, they may, they may give you little things that you need to be careful for or careful of. But it's not like, oh, I came from this other company over here and that company was telling me everything to do. So I don't want to hear nothing he got to say. So, you know, in life, we still need guidance, mm. you know? So I feel like that's what's missing in the X community is the guidance that people, they're not getting that. And I, and I don't mean the guidance about going to church. I'm talking about, you know, like if, if me and another friend and I see her dating somebody and I see that this guy might not be good for her, I should be able to say that. I should be able to say, look, be careful, Watch out what you're doing. Mm -hmm. And the person shouldn't be saying, we can do this now. I can sleep with 10 men a night. I don't care. Right. But you don't want to give people yeah. information to help them so that they stay safe. You know, yeah. you yeah. know, that's the kind of stuff that, that we're dealing yeah. with now. You, you see what happens is because you're so restrained, you now have freedom. And it, mm -hmm. it's they go off the hinges they go sometimes. Off, man, I'm gonna tell you, man, some folks just go off the deep end, man. And you're like. And then when you talk to them, they're like, yeah, I know it, it, it is crazy, ain't it, JT? <laughs> yeah, it was, man. It really was. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I that's mean, sad because a lot of paths, yeah. you know, religion or not, a lot of it is self-destructive. And self so mm -hmm. this is why we 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 need a place where critical thinking can take place and you give people, like you said, a landing, a ledge to land on, something to land on. So my right. final question for both of you, if it was not even a question, it's it's a statement. <laughs> and, 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 and there's someone out there who's watching this. They're hiding behind their screen because they can't go to the elders. They can't go to the church. No. No. A word of encouragement to them. They're in it. They might be PMOs. They may not be PMOs. They may be people physically in, mentally out. They are not believers, but they're, they're physically stuck. What would be your encouragement since you just did a video on this? And that's a tough one. To that person, to that elderly person in that home or that person who's in a marriage in their entire life, their children and everything. They go and BS their way through the services because they love them even more than than this whole ideology. What are your words of encouragement to the PMOs in the world before I let you go? Lady C, you want you, you want you want to that's a that, that is a tough one, depending on who you're talking to, because if you're talking to a youngster that's 14 years old, well, you got four years before you can actually leave the home. So you can begin to educate yourself, go on the Internet, learn about different um, occupations you might want to get involved in, do better in your schooling, try to get a degree so you can go to college, stuff like that. So the younger person is easy. The older person that's going to be a little bit more work to do. Um, I, I would just say go along with the program that you're in. 
turn in that field service time, even though you ain't talking to nobody. Don't don't tell people, don't don't try to, to push your what you're learning on other people because all it's gonna do is um it's gonna shine the spotlight on you and make it harder for you. But enjoy this new freedom that you got, knowing that mentally, you know, if you go to the meeting and you're not really sitting there and you're all there, nobody really cares about that anymore. You know, so there's there's some there's some things that you can be freed from because you don't because you realize it's not the truth. But if, and if you feel like you got to plan your escape, you know, don't just try to get up and just go somewhere. Make sure you get a plan of action. You know, um, the elderly people, I, I just don't know what I would say. I would just, you know, try to enjoy the life that you have left. You know, you may not be able to leave where you live at, you know. But you can certainly enjoy different things because I'm sure your your spouse might not be sitting in the room with you the whole time, you know. So there's a lot of I mean it's 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 really um a lot of people, a lot of different scenarios and different people that you're dealing with. So um, the biggest thing is you're mentally freed from 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 realizing that no one's gonna gonna destroy you at Armageddon because you didn't read the latest magazine. Um, God is not going to punish you because you didn't get an hour in field service. You know, all of the Jehovah's Witness rhetoric about being active and being at meetings and stuff like that, that doesn't apply anymore. Mm. So just knowing that you don't have to do that when you're going through your actions of, hey, I'm going to be here, I'm going to show up. Some people said they show up to the meetings and they're reading a book on their iPad. When they, when, they, when they were like going in, in person, you know? And so they would show up and act like they were doing things, but they really weren't indulging, you know? Thank you. Thank you so much. JT? Um, I, I think it's important to, to realize the fog, fear, obligation, and guilt. Um, you now can lift that veil of fear. You now can lift that veil of guilt and obligation. Um, the most important thing I think is to know that you're not alone. The organization literally sets it up so that you feel that you are by yourself. And when you're by yourself, you have nothing to turn to, no one to turn to, no help. And that's really what the internet has done. It has allowed people to see, you remember the story Animal Farm? With the other mm -hmm. animals on the other side, didn't know what was going on. They thought this and that. Well, now you see that there are people on the other side of the farm and they're mad at the farmer as well. <laughs> and so and so that's really the thing is that you now can realize you are not alone. You're not going crazy because see, they make you think the way the organization is set up is designed to make you think that you are the problem. I remember, man, you you you, you couldn't understand a magazine. You, you have an article you study. You couldn't get it. It was because you spiritually weak. You're not spiritually minded enough. That's why you can't understand the deep things of God. Two years later, they throw that magazine out and say, oh, we ain't teaching that no more. So the real reason you couldn't understand was because it was foolish to start with. Now you understand this now. Makes all the sense in the world. And so no longer having to feel that you are alone. And like, you know, Lady C mentioned, you now can lift these burdens off you even if you physically can't leave. Mentally, you don't have to worry about that. I got two hours this month. Put me down. Put me down for two hours, two magazine, and move on. Roll. Keep it rolling. Um, and so that's really the, the, the thing. Uh, everybody's circumstances is so different. And, and there are some people, unfortunately, we have seen and we know they may not ever be able to get out because of their circumstances. Mm -hmm. But they still can have, they still can find joy in knowing that at least I know I'm not doing something that's destroying me in my relationship with God. Because that's you know, that, that's what that's what bothers people. I mean, they think that, that God gonna get mad at them. And when you find out God don't care about no two hours a month, he don't care about no magazine that's gonna get thrown in the trash in six months. He don't care about that stuff. That is a relief. I tell people all the time, you know, you can sit, you can sit in your underwear and read the newspaper on Saturday mornings. You ain't gotta go knock on doors in the winter no more. You know, so that's the kind of stuff that, that just means so much to me. And I, we talk to people, man, they're like, JT, it's just so nice to be able to lay in the bed Saturday morning. <laughs> And, and be spend time with the family and do stuff. That's what people want to do, and that's what people enjoy doing. It's just that simple. Just that simple. 
And I want to say this one thing with what JT said. Give them the two hours because I'm hearing this too much. Yeah, I'm, no. just, I'm hearing people say yeah. I'm Pimo and the brother called my husband and wanted to know why I had not turned in field service time. Yeah. The one thing that I have noticed about witnesses is no one is surveilling you to see what door you knocked on. All right. they want is the time. Just give them the time. Yeah. Give them the two hours. Give them and the it's five so, hours. Yeah, it's okay. so amazing, man. The <laughs> elders will not call. And this is what's so amazing. The elders will not call your sister Johnson calls to see how you're doing. You feel okay. They will <laughs> not call you to check on how you're doing. Right. But when the end of the month come, I need your time, sister. I need you. And it's like, you ain't calling me all month. You ain't asked about my kids. Nobody. Oh, you want some time. We have had people who have been in the hospital, man, in the hospital, sick, and the elders call. I understand you in the hospital. Can I get your time, sister? But this worse oh than that. My I gosh. talked to this brother five years ago, and he said when his grandmother was on her deathbed, that's the one. Her that's death the one. taking her last breath. That's the the one. elder came in there and said, Do you got did you report any time? And he no. said, he said, yeah. I can't make this up. He said, I can't make this up. <laughs> She was drawing her last breath, and the brother came in. How, how much and, time you got? <laughs> how much time? <laughs> you know, we can make sure that it goes into the yearbook. If you just tell me how much time you got, I can make your short. I can uh, make sure your time gets counted. You know, this is kind of like I'm using a bad analogy here, but just to give an analogy, it reminds me of when the Roman emperors were killing Christians. You know, for not, or at least they weren't bending to lighting a candle for the yeah. moment, you know, we're going to kill you. Right. I'm going to light that candle. You know what I'm saying? And then go about <laughs> my way and just enjoy the rest of my day. I'm not about to get killed because you want to tell me I got to light a candle. That, that candle didn't mean nothing. If Paul tells you, you can eat whatever and that demons don't mean nothing. And you know, like, Come on, like, do you really think he's gonna care? Like, just like hey, the damn candle, you know what I mean? Hey man, as one as one witness told me, he says, "I'm gonna take him. I'm taking my chance." God, he's known to forgive, <laughs> so I ain't worried about it. It is That's amazing. Is, you know, that is a wonderful uh, point. If the if the organization is telling you the end is near and they're not telling the truth on that, yeah. Okay, at what point do you have to be so yes morally obligated to yes. give them these exact two? I didn't really get any time in this month, and I'm going to stay, stay on my ground. Now, if you're ready to get the heat, <laughs> then you're ready and get the heat. But if you're trying to be Pimo and keep whatever because you know, it, like like with JT and Lady Sierra, my question specifically was, you're not just Pimo and you could just leave. Like, there is detrimental yeah. repercussions oh, yeah. to oh, it. That's right. What's more important to you? And that's the decision you need to make. Yeah. Thank you, JT. Hey, man. JT. It's always good. Always appreciate good, man. It. Appreciate always good. Appreciate on your program. Always. Yeah, man. Thanks for inviting us back on. We appreciate yeah. it. Oh, you, I hope, will come back soon. And oh, I yeah. mean soon in the <laughs> real sense. <laughs> <laughs> it's, around the it's, around, it's around the corner, man. Around the corner. Around the corner. Right around the corner, you know, in a couple thousand years. You I know, know right? the, last, the last of the last, last of the, the last, last days. We are living <laughs> in the last of the last. Thank you so much. Hey, man. Take gentlemen. care of yourself. You're Take welcome. Take care of the family as well. I will. Go subscribe to their YouTube channel and never forget me. Ah. Oh.